And Mike, you were right on your stuff. Thank you. We have a so so is he supposed to be the county manager? I don't think there's anything so so about him. So so would be giving the benefit of the doubt. Uh, the, the guy is incompetent as far as running elections, in my opinion. And that's just based on the facts of what we've seen and the people he continues to choose. He chooses people who don't know. It's the blind leading the blind. We've got somebody in charge of the department who hires people who don't know what they're doing. And then we get the mess that we have. And then if they don't uh, toward the line, as um, former Commissioner Blake Briegler says, then they get pressured by What's taking place at the county? May I ask a question about that, Mike? Sure. So if, is Eric your employee? Is he reporting to you and the commissioners? He reports to the three commissioners who support him. He doesn't report to me. I can okay. assure you of that. Well, I, I understand that. But that is the role, correct? He's, yeah. he, he, reports. He, works, he works for the commissioners. So if you've got two ultra-liberals plus a... Uh, a uh, so-called Republican who votes with them. It's a three to two vote on, on everything we do of any importance. Whatever they want to do, he supports. And whatever he wants to do, they support. And so at the end of the day, four people run this county, the manager and three commissioners, and they're running, uh, they're, they're making 500,000 citizens uh, comply with their wishes. I don't think it's right. If I may, yeah. um, if HR, right, if HR. It takes one more vote. That's No, what if takes. HR had information, that's okay. No, if HR had information that was factual that showed that he was either um, going after these gals or whatever, somehow uh, coercing them to, because I've, I've experienced similar types of things in different jobs. Sure. Um, what options might you have? There are no options. The only option is getting another reasonable voice on the commission. And here's why. The people at the HR department, there's 31 different departments in the county. The manager oversees all of their budgets. The manager oversees everything. Talk about, uh, talk about uh, somebody totally in charge of what's taking place. Uh, we've got three votes that support anything he wants to do. The HR department uh, is, is in lockstep with, with what's going on. Th their job is on the line. Talk about a conflict of interest. This is outrageous. We've got three commissioners who back up the manager. The manager controls everybody's budget, including the elected officials, even the other elected officials. I'm talking, there's seven elected officials in this county, plus the commissioners. It's the sheriff. It's the DA. It's the public administrator. It's the clerk. It's the assessor. It's the treasurer. All of these folks are elected, but they still have, have to comply with the manager oversees all of their budgets. Follow the money, folks. That's, that's what this is about. Dr. Cohen has to be it, sir. I mean, that's obviously he's going after us. I don't know anything about that. I'm trying to say, people ask me how to get it fixed and how the way to get it fixed is get a reasonable other vote on the commission. And other than that, you got what you got. It's a lockstep situation. They always vote in. Just watch the county commission meetings. You don't see these three other commissioners ever deviating from each other. Do you? Anybody no, goes no. to meetings a lot? <laughs> no, they're, they're lockstep. It's okay. Uh, Melissa, I have a question uh, for you. Could, so you said there's no restriction on what the state can do on this. But I have a question. The county commission could, could they do an informed consent? So I have three, two things. Inform, could they do informed consent? Because that's not in this bill, right? No, they could not. Because it, uh, um, this is a constitutional amendment. So every past law that we have or current law that we have on abortion and any future law would have to fit within this. And um, informed consent in, in Michigan, which had a similar uh, so because it is a an obstacle now the county commission would have no ability to provide um, provide any regulation either because it specifically says no state or local uh, jurisdiction can um, uh, let's see 
it can can regulate. Let me let me get the. Um, uh, without interference from state or from the state or its political subdivisions, which would also include schools. And that's particularly bad when you think about um, like the Democratic Na National Convention recently, they had a, a mobile abortion van pull up and give free abortions and vasectomies. Um, the state and local governments would not be able to regulate the location of, of these things. So it's foreseeable that you could see the same kind of situation happen in front of our junior highs and high schools. So this will be the last question and then you can talk afterward. This is the last question. So if you want to ask any more questions, just come up after the, uh, the luncheon and um, I'll be, I'm trying to get everybody out by one o'clock so you can just, we we'll get people in and out. This is more like an observation, but a question. And I think everybody needs to be aware of this. I've been involved in the election since 2022, doing whatever needs to be done, get involved instead of, you know, instead of sitting at home complaining. And this is to Mike Clark. What I'm seeing is the state taking over our elections. They're centralizing. I came from purchasing with corporations, and as soon as they centralized, you lost control. These are our voices. It's our First Amendment right. I don't like sitting back and watching them take away my First Amendment right. They're making it silent right in front of us. I think that has a lot to do with what we're seeing. This new VRAM that everybody, not, well, some of the commissioners bragged about, praised, we have no control locally anymore. I have friends that cannot change their status. And then if they try, it's frustrating. We have people that moved away years ago that are still on the rolls and they can't seem to get it done. You're going to have to go to the state level and keep your fingers crossed. It's easier to have local control. Is that true? Am I observing correctly? That's what's question. Thank you. The problem that we have is this is uh, all controlled by Car the folks in Carson City. The, the local commissioners have no say in this, but we're, we're certainly playing right into the state's hands. The state is controlled by uh, liberal Democrats, and uh, this is the way they want. They, they can outvote us. It's, and I, I talk about it, it's always a three to two vote on the county commission, and it's always the same kind of a situation down in Carson City when the legislators meet again next February, I believe it is, for their 120 days of uh, God knows why. But uh, to your point, this, this is going to be controlled by the state. The local folks can't seem to control it. I don't have a lot of faith in what the, what the state's going to do, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of out of our hands at this point in time. So, in closing, I'm going to have Bob Devin. He's here today. No on three, also, and um, Ray, take it away after Bob on. And uh, thanks for everybody coming. Just about one admin announcement: We have a dinner next month. It's scheduled for um, the seventh, which is two days after the election. It may or may not get postponed. Um, we'll have that information out shortly. So go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I have a call in. I have a call in to the Atlantis and the Megan Bart that'll be the host. If it would work out to do um, Wednesday the 13th, it gives it a little bit more time. But that's not firm. Right now, the seventh is firm. Yeah. And it'll be a panel where she'll have a panel of and the theme is going to be happy, Republic, uh, the election, Republicans happy, so-so, or sad. Hopefully, it'll be happy. But that's going to be the theme. And it'll be at the Atlantis, regardless of the day. And it'll be at dinner. Good luck. Well, thanks, Ray, for, the, for those that information. Richard Clark, Melissa. Ray, thanks for letting me speak for a moment. Uh, I'm one of the chairs for the uh, No on Three Committee. Uh, we're doing pretty good. We've got a lot of radio ads. Uh, we're looking for some more money for our Spanish stations. We've got uh, Monica Lehman, who's our Spanish-speaking lady, who's doing commercials and on the Spanish radios. Uh, we have Tony Grady doing uh, radio ads on KKOH, KFFT. Uh, if anybody would like a sign, 
I brought some extra signs here. I have handouts in the back there if you'd like to take some. I've been handing out my little business card. Uh, that is a really kind of a nice way. If anybody would like to give those to your son, there's about a thousand of them sitting over at the Washoe County GOP office north of the uh, Atlantis there. And I, I do appreciate uh, what Commissioner Clark has been trying to do. Uh, he has been stymied at every level. Uh, Alexis Hill has shouted him down in the middle of a sentence. He is, she's been absolutely horrid. She reminds me of the Bolshevists that took over Russia. And that's their game plan, to shut people out. And I'm glad that we've got Mike here to speak up for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One last comment for me is, if you get an opportunity to come to the county commission meeting, let's ask the county what happened to these 26,000 ballots that got returned. These, these weren't made up names. These were real people that didn't get a chance to vote. 26,000 voters could have changed a lot of elections. I don't know if there were, a, I don't know what their political affiliation was, but 26,000 people got disenfranchised because of the incompetence of Washoe County's management. It's as simple as that. We should stick up for the folks who didn't have their voices heard. They might have been, uh, their address was wrong. They might have moved. Nobody followed up. Uh, to say nothing of wasting $90,000 of taxpayer money on postage and printing on 25,000, 26,000 ballots of one out. So that's the question. How come the county disenfranchised 26,000 people? How come they got returned? Did they know something? Did they know how these people were going to vote and they changed their address or made their uh, made their uh, undeliverable? Good question. Thank you. Hey, hey Mike, did you also see uh, yesterday I saw an article that the ACLU filed a petition to block all of the um, voter cleanup. They actually filed a petition in, in court. And so it's it's a continuum of them not wanting to do their job. Well, you know, we've got clean uh, assessor roles. We've got clean treasurer roles. I guarantee the treasurer, if you owe Washoe County any money, they know exactly where you live. You could be living in Timbuktu. If that's where your tax bill gets sent, they'll find you. So they they want certain roles clean, but they this one is just a mess. I mean, it's foundationally, it's, it's, uh, it's a mess. Tim.